Amen. Amen. Acts chapter number 12 this morning. For the sake of time, I want you to look at verse number 5. Acts chapter 12 and verse number 5. The Bible said, Peter therefore was kept in prison. I like these next two words. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. If I had a title this morning, I'd like to preach for a few moments on God still answers prayer. God still answers prayer. May I say that prayer can do anything God can do. May I say by way of introduction, we look there in verse number 5, the Bible says, but prayer was made without a ceasing. We find here that there is a steady prayer. One guy, man, gave me a book, uh, Why Revival Tarries by Brother Leonard Ravenhill. And man, that first chapter had me in conviction. And he said, we'll prepare more than we pray, and we wonder why God don't see in revival. Well, God, the Holy Ghost, took me behind the woodshed last week. And I'll be honest with you, if, if, if we prepare more than we pray, uh, we're missing the point. Boy, God showed me that, man, there's power in prayer. There needs to be steady prayer. That word uh, 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 cease means to stop, to come to an end. First Thessalonians 5, verse number 17 says, Pray without a ceasing. Colossians 4, verse number 2, continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. We find that Peter, he, he couldn't pray. He was in a position of not prayer, but there was prayer being made on his behalf. There is steady prayer. You'll find there in verse number 5, we find steady prayer, but we also find social prayer. Look there in verse number 5. But prayer was made without cease. And I love this next phrase, of the church. You'll find over here in verse number 12, Mary the mother of John was having a prayer meeting at her house. We find that, that prayer was going on on the behalf of somebody else. They may, the preacher said it a while ago where two or three are gathered that's where God is and there, so you get the picture now Peter's in prison he can't go nowhere he's stuck and Peter is about to die but we find there was a little church over here on the back side of nowhere that was calling Peter's name out to God can I say what a thing of the past is today is Wednesday night prayer meeting I'm glad for a Wednesday night August 16, 2006 around 8.48pm on a Wednesday night my dad was preaching over here the Holy Ghost was preaching in here and it was on a Wednesday night I got saved can I say there is I thank God for the church the church the church is where I heard the Bible. The church is where I got saved. The church is where I got called to preach. The church is where I get my help. The church is where most of my friends are. The church is where God gave me my wife. Thank God for the house of God. We find there's steady prayer. There's social prayer. But we find there's supernatural prayer there in verse number 5. The Bible said, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. I like these next two words unto God can I say this morning I don't pray to Mary I don't have to go in a box and have to talk to a man about how bad my problems are I'm, I'm glad if I need God at 2 o'clock in the morning I'm glad God's there boy there's been times these past few years boy my dad went through bad depression and man there's been moments brother Christian boy 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning I needed to talk to somebody I'm glad God was there I'm glad I don't pray to Muhammad I don't pray to Buddha I'm I'm glad God's given him a name that's above every name and that's the God I pray to today can I say he's not deaf he don't have cancer he's not in a wheelchair this morning God knows where we are and I'm glad we can call on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords there's supernatural prayer we can pray unto God there is specific a prayer look at the last two words of verse number five we find Mary's over here calling out to God Mary and all her people are calling out to God and they're there for no other reason but for one specific reason they were praying for Peter can I say this ladies and gentlemen what I've learned in life is when you pray be specific with your prayers 
God has answered some things just this time last year. I was stepping out in full-time evangelism, had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't have nothing on the books. And now, man, I look back over what God's done. It's not because I'm a good preacher. You can already tell that already. But it's because we have a good God. And I'm glad we can call on God. I've always been specific with God. And God has just wowed us. You know why? Because we were specific in our prayers. Uh, Colossians 1 verse number 9 and 10 says for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord and all please and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God Paul was talking about the church of Colossae and he was very specific in what he was praying for you know why Colossae was such a powerful church? They had a specific prayer. Can I say you want God to do something? You say, preacher, I need a house. Hey, why not be specific in what you want? Amen. Preacher, I need a new vehicle. Why not pray for exactly what you want? You say, preacher, I don't believe God can do that. You don't believe the word of God. If you own a GMC Sierra, somebody say amen. A black one, amen, that can run 100 miles an hour. Pray for it. God might just give it to you. Yeah. Be specific in your prayers. Can I say that we find in verse number one, we find the vexing of the church. Verse number one, now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. I'm not here to preach politics, but what I will say this, they don't like us and I don't like them. Can I get amen? The government has never been for the church. They've never been for the house of God and the people of God. And why should we expect anything different today? Can I say they hate us? The word vex means to irritate or to annoy, to provoke or to torment or to distress and cause worry. Guess what they're doing? They're doing that. Can I say it was a personal vexation? The Bible says in verse number one, the king stretched forth his hand. It's one thing when, when not kings stretch forth their hand, maybe they send their servants out, but it's a totally different thing when the king stretches forth the hand to vex the church. It was a precise vexation. Look there at the end of verse number one, to vex a certain of the church. Can I just time out and say this right here? When they do something, they have a force and a meaning behind it. There's a reason behind what they do. They, they try to silence the house of God. They try to man do precise things. And, and may I say they're very good at what they do. There's precise vexation. There's painful vexation. Look at verse number 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And I've got to be honest with you. If uh, Man, my, my, my brother's out there. I don't have one, but if Brother John's out there, Brother James, and boy, he's about to get his head chopped off. Brother Rocky, I've got to be real careful because my flesh would say, Brother Donald, I just don't know if we're serving God. I, I just don't know. Your family member gets lined up, and man, they chop their head off right in front of you, Brother Mark, and you're thinking, what in the world? But I'm glad, man, this, 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 what happened, this death didn't stop people from praying to God. Oh my, there is painful vexation. 2 Corinthians 2 verse number 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Can I say this, what I'm learning, he is very, very wise in what he does. He is very cunning in what he does. Everything he does, he wants to make a mockery at the people of God. Every device he puts out, he wants to shame the people of God. But aren't you thankful for those people that can't, a man take a licking and just keep on ticking? I'm glad not everybody's bowing down one guy said this A.W. Tozier I'm not afraid of the devil he can't handle the one whom I'm joined to I'm glad the devil amen can only do so much we find the vexing of the church but may I say verses number 6 through verse number 11 there's value to the church there's value may I want you to look at verse number 6 and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping, notice this now, between two soldiers. I wish two sticks was in here. Say amen. Bound with two chains. And the keepers with an S before the door kept the prison. Can I say this, ladies and gentlemen? Peter was in a position in life where nobody was coming in and nobody was getting up. 
I was a youth pastor three years, and man, I've learned a lot. All my gray hair, I'm only 34, come from church people. Say amen right there. What I've learned, there are kids that mom and dad have been praying for for a very long time. They can't get to them, and that kid seems like they're never getting out. You've got family members that are, man, trapped in sin. They are locked away behind the bars of sin. And boy, Peter, he was stuck. The fact of the matter is, Peter's not going nowhere. Peter, if, if God don't tarry and the sun don't come up and God don't intervene, Brother Wheeler, Peter is going to die. But aren't you glad, hallelujah, over here in Mary's house, they know there's something they can do. Can I say at Mary's house, they couldn't get to where Peter is. Amen. Peter's stuck. Peter's not going nowhere. But old Mary said, I need y'all to come in here for a moment. Boy, we need to come together. Maybe it was a Wednesday night, Brother Doug, that they got the church together. Old Mary got over there and said, God, we know Peter's not going nowhere. You got to remember Peter wasn't getting out. But I'm glad when we can't get to where they are. Amen. I'm glad we got somebody who can go there. Oh, Mary said, boy, let's, let's, let's pray for Peter. Boy, they begin to cut and loose. And they begin to talk to God. Boy, miles separated them. You've got family today that, that are miles away from you. You don't even know what they did last night. And they break your heart. And that family member breaks your heart. And you, boy, I've heard this. that My kid's gone too far. Well, uh, they've done too much. Uh, my family members stoop so far and sin. I remind you today uh, I don't care how far they go uh, how far they're in it I'm glad we have a God uh, who can go to where they are uh, I remind you God is bigger than any alcohol this morning God is bigger than any drugs uh, God's better than anything I'm telling you God can move on the behalf there's the vexing of the church there's value to the church say preacher what's the value prayer we are powerless because we are prayerless Peter wasn't going nowhere Peter was stuck and may I say this some of us our prayers never get answered because we are trying to analyze the situation instead of getting it to God I wonder what I can do brother Travis to get my kid out I wonder if I send them another hundred I wonder if I'd help them out can I say another hundred ain't going to solve the problem Another piece of money ain't going to solve the problem. I tell you, what will solve the problem? Getting on your knees before a thrice holy God, recognizing God can do what you can't do. Peter's over there stuck. May I say verse number seven, I like this. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side. And boy, I like this. And raised him up. Oh my, and he smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. I like this last verse. And his chains fell off from his hands. I remind you this morning I'm glad we have a serve a God that is a chain breaker oh my I'm glad the chains of sin boy when God gets a hold of somebody boy God begins to shake God begins to do a work in their heart I'm glad we have a God that's a chain breaker in our life can I say this where were you before God come to where you were how many drunkards we have in here this morning how many dope heads we have in here this morning except for a good loving God to come down from heaven save your soul and break the chains of sin I say bless his holy name I'm glad if you got chains today I'm glad we have a chain breaker daddy dad, daddy boy God can break your chains uh, mama daddy can break your chains uh, young person God can break those chains off you you hear me now God is a chain breaker today Hey, man, I don't care what you're in or what your kids are in. There's no chain big enough that can stop the good Lord of glory. Hey, man. God's a chain breaker. I've seen men hard, hard men. 
Oh, the Holy Ghost, Brother Mark, get a hold of their heart. I know they was hard. Man, grew up in church my whole life. Boy, mama been up praying for them. Boy, they almost give up. Oh, boy, the Holy Ghost begins to knock at their heart's door. That old hard-hearted man that slowed it down was sin. Boy, I've watched them get up, uh, come to the altar. Boy, them chains just start falling off. You say, who does that? There's only one that can do that, and his name is the King of Kings. Uh, he's the Lord of Lords today. He can break the chains in your life. Oh, my, Peter's stuck. Peter was told to stand you say, preacher, why in the world did they put two chains and, and two soldiers and, and the keepers of the guard? You know why? They knew Peter was the real deal. They didn't want to admit it. But they knew Peter had something, amen, that they didn't have. They was going to try to stop God from working. Can I tell you, I don't care what surrounds your family what surrounds your situation I don't care what boyfriend or girlfriend has your kid God can move through anything God can move through people God can move through places why because he's God and amen he can do whatever he needs to to get the job done Peter was stuck Peter was told to stand don't you get in your mind Peter's not going nowhere Brother Doug, he's stuck. Those chains uh, will have him down. Those chains got him stuck. But over here at Mary's house, they're not worried about the chains. They're not worried about the keepers. They're not worried about, boy, how nasty the jail cell is. Only thing they're concerned about is getting what's in their heart into his hands. Amen. Amen. They're worried about getting what's in here. There's somebody up there who can do something. Boy, while Mary in her house is praying, while the church is gathered together, they're calling Peter's name out to God. They have no idea what's going on over here. They have no idea. Boy, I see a Mary saying, Oh, God, please let the chains fall off Peter. Oh, God, if you don't move on behalf, well, Peter's going to die. God, if you don't move in the whole time they're praying... God's over here working. Can I say this this morning? You know why God never works on this end? We don't work on this end. Some of you this morning, God wants to break those kids and that family member out. But God's not going to work over there if we're not willing to work right here. Peter's stuck. Peter's not going nowhere. But he had a church praying for him. Can I be honest with you? There's been Wednesday nights. Boy, I come to church and I really didn't feel like it. Anybody ever been like that? Boy, you come to church and you're tired and, and you wore out and really just don't feel like being there. One on our Wednesday night, my dad, when he pastored, he pastored 30 years the same church. And boy, he'd get up on Wednesday night and he'd open the floor. A lot of times you'd have some baloney. Say amen. But every once in a while, boy, a little gray-haired saint would stand up, Brother Mark, and say, Pastor, I just, I don't have no prayer requests, but preacher, I just want to thank God for a moment. Preacher, last week I had cancer. Preacher, last week I had a problem. And preacher, last week we was praying for my grandchild. And preacher, I got no complaints God come through you know all of a sudden that service I didn't want to be in that service I didn't give nothing about oh the Holy Ghost began to stir in my heart oh my can I remind you prayer still gets the job done coming to the house of God still pays off what I find in life I don't care how dark it is how bad the storm may get boy if I can get it out of my heart I can get it into his hands there's no telling what God could do look at verse number 8 and I'm done and the angel said unto him guard thyself I like this next phrase and bind on thy sandals the whole time they are praying over here God's working over there boy don't you want to see God do some work over there we all got areas in our life over there that need God. And the only way we're going to move the God of heaven is we got to work here before God works over there. Boy, they're over here praying, God, please get Peter out. Brother James, please help, help, help old brother Peter. 
say, help my friend, help my friend get out. We're just having a prayer meeting service. We're not coming. We're just praying for old Peter. And the whole time, Brother Donald, while they're praying, old Peter's getting up. I like what the Word of God says. He says, bind on thy sandals. The whole time they're praying, Peter's lacing his shoelaces up. You know why some of you never see prayers get answered and walk to your door? You'll find that's what Peter did. Peter come knocking at the house of the very church that was praying for him. You know why some of you never get your prayers answered in their shoes and they come home? You're not willing to get here. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost told me last week. I preached a youth camp meeting. Preached a youth meeting. Brother Mark and those teenagers I know from Man, jacked up lives. I'm talking about bad lives. Why I went in there Tuesday night, Brother Wheeler, I, was, I just gave it all I got. It was 158 degrees. It was outside. Man, I was just giving it everything I've got. Well, then I got home and I told my wife, I said, baby, I, I struck out. I struck out. Anybody ever struck out? Got, got home pitching a pity party. But look, here's when the Holy Ghost climbed on my lap Wednesday morning. The Parker, this is what he told me. He said, Jeffrey, you need to pray more. Well, Lord, I'm doing it. And here's what I told the Lord. I got my little boy. God's given me the opportunity to be a stay-at-home dad. I don't, I don't take it for lightly. I, I appreciate the ability to raise my son. Amen. I'm glad somebody else don't have to. I'm thankful I get the opportunity to raise that little rascal. Brother Doug, here's what I told God. I said, Lord, I'm busy. Mark, I'm busy. Y'all know how baby is. Say amen. Amen. You can't leave him alone now. He's getting where he knows you're there and it's over. Say Amen. But Doug, I was sitting in a, in a place in Piedmont getting work done in my truck, Brother Josh. And I told God, I said, Lord, I'm too busy. You know, I got to watch that key and I was making every excuse under the sun, Brother Mark. Here's what the Holy Ghost said. You want me to take that excuse out of the way? All right, all right, little kid, all right. See, over there, we want over theirs to happen. But when we get here, we don't have the time. I tell you what I did Wednesday morning. I sat in that little that little place over there in Piedmont, and I said, "God, you're right." I would hate, brother Doug, for God to have to snatch my little boy out of my life just so I can be over here. Can I say this morning, some of you never get over there and see God move because you're not willing to get over here. Over here takes time. My dad, I'm not bragging. Well, my dad's been in depression. You pastors know how it is. My dad, honest before God, hasn't smiled in a year and a half. I'm about smile. Y'all know my dad, he's a character. He's a character. Hadn't smiled, Brother James, a year and a half. I got a text, Brother Rocky. This don't do nothing for y'all. It does something for me. My, my sister, they're at the beach this week. And Brother Doug, my, my twin sister said for the first time in a year and a half, she heard my dad laugh. Preacher, I don't do nothing. It may not do nothing for you. But it does something for me. You know why? Because I've been here. Seems like the city, the longer I pray here, nothing's happening over there. Oh, my, just to hear my dad smiled and laughed. Said, Preacher, doesn't work. Can I say it's just one smile? You know, we've been praying for. Just to see a laugh. Hallelujah. Just to see God move on my dad's behalf. Can I remind you this morning, prayer still works. God still answers prayer. I don't care how small you think it is, how big it is. You give it to God and watch God work over there. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.